Heat waves are affecting the continent. With temperatures rising, Egypt stands to lose 30% of its food production in southern areas by 2040. Now, food and crop productivity is affected and farmers are using more water for less land. This farmer used to get all the water he needed to feed his crops in northern Egypt. Then the canal linking his seven acres to the river Nile started drying up and he had to abandon half the plot. The farm is a victim of a water crisis that is creeping into Egypt, aggravated by the country's growing population and the adverse effects of climate change. مشكلتنا ان يعني عايزين نستفاد من موضوع تطوير المزاج زي ديه لان طبعا خدم جزء واحواض في البلد وفي جزء ما تخدمش طبعا فاحنا نفسنا ان يعني طالبين تطوير مزاجي نفس القصه دي بحيث تخدم الارض بتاعتنا لان احنا ما زلنا بنستخدم المزاج القديمه اللي هي طبعا بطينه ومن الارض وبتهدر الميه وبتاخد وقت في فري الارض يعني الفدان ممكن بياخد ست ساعات وسبع ساعات انما ببص انا جيران زي جيران عنده المزج ده كده الفدان يعني من ثلاث ساعات لاربع ساعات بيكون خلص الريه بتاعته كلها A country is considered water scarce if supplies drop below 1000 cubic meters per person per year In Egypt according to officials that number is around 570 It's expected to drop to 500 cubic meters by 2025 without taking into account the impact of the Great Renaissance Dam, which Egypt says will lower water levels even further. But Ethiopia says it's taken into account the water needs of its neighbors. You also have uh, the reduction of water from the Nile. If the Nile water drops, like I said before, any 2% drop of water affects 1 million people. So it's really the more impoverished categories and the farmers I think that will be affected most. The United States is currently hosting dialogues between the countries and their fellow Nile user Sudan to try restart stall talks over the hydropower project. But even if Washington succeeds where years of trilateral negotiations have failed, Egypt will still have broader water problems that have left it struggling to sustain food production. بشكل عام في مصر كلها ارتفاع الحاد في درجات الحرارة وزيادة حدة ومدة الظاهر الجوية غير الاعتيادية زي الموجات الحرارية غير الاعتيادية بيزيد من استهلاك المزروعات للمية وبالتبعية كميات المية اللي كانت بتكفي مساحة معينة من 20 أو من 30 سنة النهاردة ما تكفيش احنا محتاجين مية أكتر More than 80% of Egypt's water is used for agriculture, but scarcity means Cairo already imports about half of its food and is the world's largest wheat importer. The government is urging farmers to use more efficient irrigation and plant seeds with shorter lifespans that require less water. But with the temperatures set to rise further, a more drastic plan may be required. And finally, soldiers in Sierra Leone are taking a different kind of warrior pose. The military in the country is offering yoga sessions to its soldiers to help them deal with the civil war in the country. Lance Corporal Michael Cargbo says he's not been able to escape the painful memories from his time as a child soldier in Sierra Leone's civil war. That is, until he discovered yoga. I'm still traumatized, but I'm now able to control it because of how yoga transformed me. Sierra Leone's military is running regular yoga sessions to help soldiers deal with the trauma from the 1991 to 2002 conflict that killed around 50,000 people. At the age of 12, Kargbo was kidnapped by rebels. We had boys who killed their mothers and fathers, all before they even turned 12. It was at that age they took me, and I was with them until I had grown big. 
I had nobody to help me or give me encouragement, and no one to help me get my life back to normal again. Nobody. I continued to fight with them, building up trauma, killing innocent people. Cargbo now helps instruct around 100 servicemen and women at the army headquarters in Freetown. Alongside the man who persuaded his superiors about the benefits of yoga, Sergeant Felixson Musa. You create problems for yourself. At the end of the day, you keep on blaming people. Why do you do that? Musa was taught by Tamba Fayiya, another former child soldier who became the first qualified yoga teacher in Sierra Leone in 2012. Stepping out of your comfort zone. And together they gave free yoga lessons in Freetown slums. But in 2014, Fayiya died, a victim of the Ebola epidemic that ravaged the country. Musa was determined to keep his teacher's skills alive. By doing yoga, I think... Uh, you don't always think about what has passed. You think about the present moment. That is what always I tell them. Forget about what have gone. Yeah, I know you have suffered a lot for quite a long time, but think about what you are presently doing. Over the next year, Musa hopes to roll out the yoga program to emergency responders, hospital workers and others who may be struggling to deal with traumatic experiences. Namaste. Namaste. And that's it for this week's episode of Hashtag Africa. Remember, you can keep the conversation going online. We are at Africa underscore ENCA. And while you're at it, why don't you send through your messages and videos of hopes for Africa in 2020. I look forward to reading and seeing some of them. But for me, Dumelo Mototwane, until next time, goodbye.